been frozen for 100,000 years, but according to scientists, by the end of this century, that won't be true anymore. The top of the world is melting. There's been a debate burning for years about the causes of global warming, but the scientists you're about to meet say the debate is over. New evidence shows that man is contributing to the warming of the planet, pumping out greenhouse gases that trap solar heat. Much of this new evidence was compiled by an American scientist, Bob Carell. In 2004, he led a study called the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment. It's an awkward name, but listen to the findings. The seas are rising. Hurricanes will be more powerful like Katrina, and polar bears may be headed toward extinction. What does the melting Arctic look like? We went north to see what Bob Carell calls a global warning. Towers of ice, the height of 10-story buildings, rise on the coast of Greenland. It's the biggest ice sheet in the northern hemisphere, 700,000 square miles. But temperatures in the Arctic are rising twice as fast as the rest of the world, so a lot of Greenland's ice is running out to sea. Right now, the planet is out of balance. Bob Carell is among the world's top authorities on climate change. He led 300 scientists from eight nations in the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment, and he believes he's seen the future. This is a bellwether, a barometer, as some people call it, the canary in the mine, the warning that things are coming. In 10 years here in the Arctic, we see what the rest of the planet will see in 25 or 30 years from now. Look at what's happened in less than 30 years. That's the North Pole in September 1979. That's the North Pole in September of last year. Have another look at that. 1979 and September 2007. The glacier has been receding for the last 50 years, so... Back in 1987, President Reagan asked Carell to look into climate change, and he's been at it ever since. In Iceland, he showed us glaciers that were growing until the 1990s are now melting. In fact, 98% of all the world's mountain glaciers are melting. Carell says all that water will push sea levels three feet higher all around the world in 100 years. Well, you and I sit here, another foot. Your, your children, another foot. Your grandchildren, another foot. And um, it won't take very long for sea level to inundate. This lake will go all the way back to there. Um, the sea level will be uh, inundating the lowlands of virtually every country of the world, ours included. To find the sights and sounds of the Arctic melting, there are few places better than this. This is a fjord in Greenland, and the glacier is just a short distance up this way. What I'm standing on is a huge block of ice that split off from the glacier recently and dropped into the sea. It's a big iceberg at this point. This part of Greenland is melting faster than just about any other. And to get a sense of the enormity of what's happening, consider this. The ice that is melting here is the equivalent of all of the ice in the Alps. That's more than 105 million acres of melted ice in 15 years. And just four minutes after we cleared off this bird. Our ice joined in. We saw how unstable the ice is becoming on a flight with glaciologist Carl Boggild. Boggild anchored 10 research stations to the ice, but every time he comes to visit, the ice and his stations have moved. One of the really impressive things you see from the air are all these, these fissures, these crevasses that are breaking through the ice everywhere. What, what causes this? This is actually the ice flow where you have so much tension in the ice that it cannot stick together and it breaks and, and, and opens a crevasse which goes about 150, 200 feet down. And, and, and it's melting. It's, melt, it's also melting on the side, yes. I think you can hear it down there. So 
little river. It's like a small river. A leading theory says those little rivers are lubricating the bottom of the ice sheet, helping it move off the bedrock and out to sea. There goes Greenland. Yeah, that's true. And there may be no stopping it. Arctic warming is accelerating. It's a chain reaction. As snow and ice melt, they reveal dark land and water that absorb solar heat. That melts more snow and ice, and around it goes. There's long been a debate about how much of this is Earth's naturally changing climate and how much is man's doing. Paul Mayeski at the University of Maine says the answer to that question is frozen right here. We'll go over here and take a look at an ice core uh, that we got from Greenland. With funding from the National Science and Foundation, Majewski has led 35 expeditions collecting deep ice cores from glaciers. The ice captures everything in the air, so it lays down an atmospheric record that covers half a million years. We could go to any section of the ice core, tell basically what the greenhouse gas levels were. We could tell uh, whether or not it was stormy, what the temperatures were like. We brought Majewski to Greenland, where he says his research has proven the same thing that it did in the Antarctic, that the ice and the atmosphere have man's fingerprints all over them. We haven't seen CO2 levels like this in how long? We haven't seen CO2 levels like this in, in hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years. What does that tell you? It all points to something that has changed and something that has impacted the system, which wasn't doing it uh, more than 100 years ago, and we know exactly what it is. It's, it's human activity. Activity like burning fossil fuels, releasing carbon dioxide, or CO2, and other greenhouse gases. The U.S. is by far the largest polluter. Carell says there's so much greenhouse gas in the air already that more temperature rise is inevitable. Are you saying that if, if, if tomorrow we stopped every car, every truck, every power plant, stopped all greenhouse gas emissions, the planet would continue to warm anyway? Absolutely. It would continue to warm for another, about another degree. That's enough to melt the Arctic. And if greenhouse gases continue to increase, the temperature will rise even more. The ice that's melting already is changing the weather by disrupting ocean currents. Corell points to floods in the U.S., heat waves in Europe, and recent catastrophic hurricane seasons. The one thing I think we can say with a fairly high degree of confidence is the severity of the storms, how, how strong the storms, these cyclonic events like hurricanes and cyclones in the Pacific, are going to get, there's going to be more severe. Now, one thing that is in doubt is whether there'll be more of them. But the intensity is going to be worse. The oceans of the northern hemisphere are the warmest they've been on record. When they get up in that temperature, they, they spin off hurricanes. Well, if it goes up a degree and up another degree, it's going to spawn these with more intensity. So when people say, where's the harm in global warming, you say, here's one of them. We do not know how much our climate could or will change in the future. We do not know how fast change will occur or even how some of our actions could impact it. 